There we go. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I am Anthony Barogas. I am here to talk to you today. You are here. I am here. We are here. And this is a live show. So if you have questions, post them in the comments. Uh, this show is live to YouTube, to Facebook, to Twitch, to Twitter, and LinkedIn. Actually, there's two Facebooks, but we won't get into that. Um, so we're live in six places right now, and I get comments from all of them. So post your questions in the comments. This is live. I know live is 20 seconds behind, but still, if you have questions, that's this is what's going to drive this show. It's a live show. It's the whole reason you are here is because, um, well, we're not on Instagram because I can't log in an Instagram, and I cannot figure out what my Instagram uh, information is. Power off. So we're just going to shut down the uh, in stream. We're not going to do Instagram, um, but we are live everywhere else. <laughs> and uh, I thank you all for being here. And I always uh, love to say uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being here. And uh, if you haven't already chimed in, tell me where you're watching from. This is a worldwide show. And I know Vicky has stayed up to one o'clock in the morning in Perth, Australia. Western Australia. Vicky was highlighted on uh, one of Stream Tech's um, conversations shows. So if you haven't uh, been tuning into those, uh, those are conversations with streaming producers. If you haven't tuned into those, please do. They're uh, really good conversations uh, with people like you, like me, who do streaming, and we can all learn a little bit from each other. Uh, because this is a live show, what questions do you have? Um, Throw them into the comments so we can really nail down those things that you are interested in. And because this is the, I'm going to, I'm backwards today, Yola Bucks Ultra Walkthrough. Yes, I know there's some green key that's not working correctly here. It's because it sees green in my Stream Tech logo. I mean, technically yellow has green in it. Um, but uh, in order for it to not see, to not key out the Stream Tech in my shirt, which is yellow, and key that out, I'm I'm just on the outside edge. So if it's not perfectly green, like it's got a little bit of a shadow, yeah, it's not normal. But if I wear some other shirt that doesn't have yellow in it, it works great. So uh, we are, for those who are interested, we are doing today's show on a pro so that I can show you the ultra. I'm not doing today's show on the ultra. Last week's show was on the ultra because I needed to switch remotely, which is one of the key features of the ultra. And um, if you are interested in finding out more, oh, and if anybody's going to NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters Convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, in just a couple weeks, I will be there. Look for me. Send me an email. I am on Facebook. I am on LinkedIn. I am on Twitter. I am on, I mean, you can, I guess you could say I'm on Twitch, but not really. Um, and YouTube, obviously. So you can send me a message through all of these different things and we can hook up. We can have a nice face to face. And I will give you, wait, wait for it. I got a pile of them here somewhere. There they are, hang on. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Uh, I We have these cool um, Stream Tech glitter stickers. It's it's hard to really see, but they, they, they they're, it's glitter. So they, they're really cool. You stick them to your laptops or whatever and um, stick them wherever you want. And uh, this is the Stream Tech logo, which you can see right up here. Da, 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 da. No, I'm not going to get that to match. But Stream Tech stickers are available to anyone who subscribes and writes me. Um, and I will be handing them out uh, at NAB in Las Vegas. So let us do a quick round of hellos because we are all here live. Let me clear that out now. Uh, do, 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 do I DJ Mike says hello. Big Kevin Media is in Kentucky. And uh, Cross Radio is in Northfields, Kent, United Kingdom. And da, 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 we have Louder Hill, Florida. We have, oops, it just bumped a new one, came in. Big Kevin Media, Christmas is coming early for you, but I meant to click on uh, this one. He is in Alberta, Canada. 
And then, of course, we've got Syracuse, New York. Ooh, this is a good one. We have da, 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 greetings from Romania. And greetings to you. Oh, here we go. See, this is a live show. We will see you at NAB. That will be awesome. Uh, Carlos Phoenix, the inimitable Carlos Phoenix says, we can maybe we can meet at NAB. Absolutely. We must share coffee or I don't drink coffee, but tea or iced tea or something. Yes. Share a burger. Let's do that. Maybe you're going to eat burgers, but I'll eat a burger. Uh, do, 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 do. A JJ's Aviation TV, a huge following channel, says hello. And um, do, 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 do. Dubrovnik, Croatia. I hope I said that right. Worked my way through that one. And we have Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we've got a really good audience in-house today. Uh, I thank you all for being here. And as always, throw those comments in for the questions you have. I'm just going to walk through this one end to the other. It's going to, I'm not going to deep dive into anything. I'm going to make separate videos for deep dives. Um, but for those who haven't yet got their hands on the ultra and have questions and want to walk through something, I'm going to talk about some of the key features that really differentiate the ultra, because I know it's, it's today's hotness. And having been a YOLO box user from the original, which I held up during the uh, show and you can actually see my monitor right there Ta -da. Um, having been using the ultra with my little flip out feet which i showed in a previous video the the cage wars video uh, i'm actually using these same feet on my ultra <laughs> for today's show uh, because it is the simplest no cage cage that i can find for the ultra i've got my tablet ready i've got a usb audio mixer ready with a good old Letrosonics microphone at the ready. And I've got, I started to make some notes, but we're just gonna wing it today because I'm here for you, you drive the show. Do, 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 do. Let's go right back up to the top. And we let's see, what questions did we have? Do, 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 do. Uh, IDJ Mike said, had three OG, that's the original, repaired all three and sold them for the Ultra. So that's going to be a huge upgrade. There's so much. Like, I'm using a Pro, and the Ultra is a small step up from the Pro, but the Ultra and the Pro are big step up from the original, um, the OG YOLO box. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the advancements over the course of the seven years of time, you know, just like today's iPhone from the iPhone seven years ago, is a big advancement. Um, same thing with all technology. So there's a lot going on there. Mm -mm -mm. And Big Kevin Media says, this Friday I get my retirement check and I'm buying a YOLO Box Ultra. Ching! That's going to be super kudos to you. Uh, I, there's a lot going on. Sit down, watch the videos, take the time to really play with the settings, and it'll get you going. Uh, let's see what we got here. Glenn says, I'm in the States right now trying to determine going with the YOLO box setup or a laptop with vMix. Want to watch to get as much info as possible to make that determination soon. As a vMix user, I've been using vMix for many years now, and I've written articles and published videos on vMix, and uh, I've got my vMix um, mouse pad over there, <laughs> the vMix fan. Uh, vMix is a super powerful tool it is computer based so you have the issues with managing computer uh, getting your hardware interfaces in and out of a computer and and all of that what the yola box does offer is simplicity it's not about power it's about simplicity and ease of use each has their place. And, and if you watch my What's the Best Tool um, video, it's what's pick the right tool for the job. I do things on vMix. I still do things on vMix, even though I do this show on a YOLO box. This, box. this show is like perfectly suited for doing it on the YOLO box. And actually, I will show you exactly why. Uh, not that one. Oh, I don't have that one in here. I'll show you later. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> because um, it's simple and being able to access certain things in a, in a touch way work really well. Now, I've augmented my YOLO box with an external switcher for more input. So when I do a side by side like this and I'm showing you the Ultra, this side by side, what's in that box 
is switched by another switcher. So there is a, you know, it's not the be all and end all, but at the same time, you can start with the Yolo box and then augment it with other things. And it's definitely the cost of a single Yolo box pro is less than the cost of a comparable computer with the same number of inputs and the processing power. And I dare say carrying around a Yolo box is way easier and plugging things in the top and tap, tap, tap and hit the go stream and hit the record and you're done. That's the magic of the Yolo box. If you need power and capability and flexibility, like mix minus audio, like uh, separate audio feeds for the st or video feeds for the stage of like separate inputs and different routing and things like that, that's vMix. If you want to get in, tap, 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 do a show and not have to worry about computers and setting up and building that's Yolo box. Different tools for different tasks. One's a screwdriver, one's an adjustable wrench. <laughs> so don't use an adjustable wrench to try and take out a screw. You use the right tool for the job. Do, do, do. <laughs> uh, big Kevin Media says, Christmas is coming early for me. That'll be cool. Da, da, da. See if we got any more uh, questions in here. What is the max quality of recording available in Ultra? Good question. Uh, let us go to the Ultra and we'll hit the monitor mode. We'll come over here to the gear icon. Da, 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 da. Management, I got my management. Local videos, low switching, switching control, SD card management. No. Yeah, I got stuff on here. Uh, no. This is interesting. Video, I, I'm like in the monitor mode for recording and I'm looking for the encoding settings. Ah, that's right. They moved it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've got 50 megabits if i can see all those zeros correctly 50 megabits is the maximum at 1080p 12 megabits at 720p 100 megabits at 4k and if you're doing 2k which just an odd resolution um it is 60 megabits so make sure you have a card capable of that because also if you're doing iso recording if you're doing recording program this one and and you know if you're recording you know trying to do all your isos at 60 three times six is 180 megabits a second uh if you're trying to do all that at 40 you've reached the upper limit of what we support <laughs> well i haven't even turned on program that's interesting. So that answers that question in each of those resolutions. I don't know if you can really speak to this, but what kind after the sale support does Yellowbox have? Is it just email? Do they have a phone number? I'm still in the pre-sale phase. I've been really trying a hard time getting a hold of someone. Uh, I think I have to scroll over here. So over there, to me, this is not a good sign. Um, YOLO Live is a Chinese company. They don't have a US office. They are not Apple. They don't have a store you can go to and say, hey, I bumped this, you know, I need a new screen. Um, it is a niche product. There are, the amount of people who do multi-camera live streaming, recording and all this stuff is very small. So you're dealing directly with a company in China. Um, they may have a WhatsApp phone number you can use, but that's not, they don't provide that level of service. That's consumer level service. That's not professional level service. If you had a problem with, uh, if you bought a Sony camera for $30,000, then you would have a, a Sony broadcast technical support phone number. Uh, if you buy a Sony consumer camera, you don't have a phone number to call. You have, um, you know, they have a website where you can buy retail from Sony. 
Uh, you can call Best Buy, which is a, a retailer in the U.S., but they don't have, you know, hey, um, how do I adjust my Zoom setting uh, phone number? No, nobody has that. Um, so I don't know what level of support you're looking to have with regards to a niche production product for streaming. Uh, they do have the Facebook group, which their team is definitely invested in. They are there to answer questions, and if they can't answer them, there's thousands of other people in the group who may be able to help as well. Uh, they do have contact at yololive.com, which is a direct email, and uh, you can try to reach them through the website also directly. But I don't take it as not a good sign when dealing with a company in China because uh, Yolo Live has uh, proven that you know even six years after the release of the original Yolo Box, they still released an update for it. So it's they're not a fly-by-night company. They um, have proven over the course of many years to be there and continually improve their products. So that does not mean uh, that does not strike fear in. Uh, it should not, it should, how do I say this? It should make you feel better about the support that they give, that they continue to support older products, even though there's long past the sale, they continue to support them and they're developing new products, actively developing new products in this, you know, realm of products. So um, the fact that you can't pick up a phone and call them when you want to have somebody answer your question, try to do that with Ford, try to do that with, um, you know, most products, you know, if you, if you have a zoom mixer, you're not going to call up zoom and say, Hey, um, I'm, I'm moving my fader, but I don't hear sound. That's not a thing that, that exists. Do, do, do uh, we love Yola box. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the link in the, uh, for the link in the thing. You should put my link in there. <laughs> I have a, uh, it'll be in the description of this show. I have a stream tech store with the video guys and uh, buy it through my affiliate link and I make 50 cents. Thanks. Um, Chris says, uh, no, I'm not doing this on the website. I'm saying here. Uh, Chris says, what's up, Anthony? How you doing? D -d -d -do Vicky finally got in, couldn't find my password. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you for being there. I know it's super early in uh, Australia, but Vicky is one of the great enthusiasts in the Facebook user group that um, is actively developing. And as I says, if you um, have a chance, let me go over here to, I'll do a shameless uh, plug. Go to the Stream Tech site on um, YouTube and if you go down to your playlists, you know, we've got uh, the live shows, obviously, which is what you're watching right now. But we also have these conversations and the conversations are talking with people just like you. And we've got a whole slew of them over here. And there's Vicky right there. We managed we did. I did a little highlight of Vicky and the uh, wedding and event videography that she does in Perth, Australia. If you know someone in the live production industry, and it doesn't have to be with the Yola box. Hey, if the, uh, send me uh, some information and I will, um, this one is upcoming, this one's really good. A and I will, you know, take that under advisement and uh, reach out to them and see if they're uh, a good conversation to have in the upcoming weeks. So that is the Stream Check channel on YouTube. So if you're watching this on Facebook or somewhere else, uh, do check that out. Subscribe. Help me get to, how close am I? 931. Help me get to 1,000. Because <laughs> I can't monetize. I can't make a single penny off of YouTube until I get to 1,000 and 4,000 viewing hours. So who knows when that's going to happen. Um, if everybody sat there and took a playlist and put it on repeat, over the weekend, I get the 5,000 hours, 4,000 hours pretty quick. <laughs> Gary says, yes, use Anthony's link. Yes, please do. Um, talk about Ultra and NDI. It unlocks so many workflows, lets you bring in NDI cameras so easily. Yes. And uh, I'm just going to plug it again. If you haven't seen it already, I have done a couple videos on my YouTube channel specifically about 
uh, NDI. Let's go right back over there. You can see my all in on NDI and NDI cameras in the OBSBOT and the Olabox Ultra. So NDI is a great technology. Uh, I wrote this article, make sure it fits in the thing, all in on NDI for streaming media um, several years ago. And I am still using NDI. And to see the Yola Box adopt NDI as both an input and an output capability uh, just helps immensely because it opens the door to um, capability. And I have an NDI standing by for when we get to that part. Uh, do, 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 do NC Promoter says he's waiting on his Ultra. Do, 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 do. I've noticed the files I record on SSD and SD card in the monitor feel stuttery. Do you think I would get better results using an external recorder like Atomos, Ninja, or Blackmagic Video Assist? No. And that is because the stutter that you see in the Yolo box, and I do have it on the Pro as well, it is an issue they are working on. The stutter, the it's frame doubling is what it is. The processor is not keeping up, so it just carries over the previous frame while it works on the next frame. So you can have two frames in a row, you can have three frames in a row of the exact same frame. It's just holding onto that frame. So that is part of the processing, not part of the recording and not part of the streaming, although there can be other streaming issues. The That is inherent depending upon what you're doing. So the more you ask your device to do, so I find I was able to just totally overwhelm the device by doing like a green screen and a picture in picture and a vid moving video and seven overlays with a rolling ticker and everything then i got the frame rate down to i think 15. you're it's still going to deliver 60 you know or 30 frames a second but it's 15 individual frames and the rest are doubles so the more you ask of the device remember it's an android tablet just like my, my Kindle Fire here. Uh, it's an Android tablet, and we're asking it to do live switching of full HD, multiple sources, after also syncing them, mixing the audio, doing titles, recording, keying, and everything. It's a lot for an Android tablet. Um, even other apps that work on iPhones and things like that don't necessarily get it all right. Um, they have other strengths, like they, they may have smooth motion, but they don't do everything that the Yola box does, nor do they have built in multi-camera HDMI inputs. That's the key thing. The Yola box sits in a place where I call these things all in one. These are all in one from hardware inputs to streaming. That's everything. It's all in one box. <laughs> Don says, wow, I caught a live stream. Thanks for being there. Um, and again, if you're here late, uh, let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to hear where people are watching from around the world. Uh, it's an upgrade from my mini. Super exciting. The mini is a great tool. Don't knock the mini because the mini, the mini is so mini. I can, I can hold it like this. I can stick it in my pocket. Yes. I'm not lying. I can stick it in my pocket. Ready? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, the mini uh, fits in my pocket. So there's that. And while it only has two inputs, if you leverage an external switcher, um, I just saw someone in the Facebook group, they wanted to have a quad split for, I think it was arm wrestling. And they used the quad split to show four things. And, and then when somebody went to go do a competition, he'd switch to that one and the commentators would comment on it. And that was really cool. And he just needed this to do the overlays, the comments, the recording, the streaming, the you know all those other things, not the actual camera inputs. So the mini gives you that capability in a really tiny package. Plus, it's got the battery in there too. You know, you don't even need the power. Uh, do, do, do any rumblings or rumors about a mix minus feature coming in a future update? I only have, I, I'm, I'm not part of the YOLO team. I don't produce videos for YOLO anymore. Uh, that ended at the end of last year. So I am, I'm even just like everyone else. I, I see what's posted in the user group and uh, Frank, who is the lead person for YOLO box, did ask some specific questions about Mix Minus. So that leads me to believe 
they are really looking for ways to make it happen. And if it does happen, it'll happen on the Ultra first, which has more capability. Question, if you were to make the purchase today, which would you buy? Which YOLO box or which software tool? Or is this between vMix and YOLO box? So can you redefine that question? How can I get a smooth pan and tilt on Obsbot tail air? Kind of jittery, not really smooth. That's more of an Obsbot question than a YOLO question, but it, you know, all questions are welcome in today's show. How do I get a smooth pan and tilt? Uh, let the Obsbot do it. If you're trying to track someone, let the Obsbot pan and tilt. It seems to do much better when it does it than when you try to control it remotely. It's it's it is a budget pan tilt zoom camera. It's not a bird dog. It's not a Sony. It's not a Panasonic. It's not a Canon that's going to cost you $1,200. When you pay that level of money, then you get more hardware. You get a bigger device that is able to do more and do it better. When you spend six $500 on an Osbot Tail Air, and it includes the battery and the Wi-Fi and the auto tracking, but it's not an optical zoom and it's only it's it's still pretty smooth when it's doing it itself but it's not going to be like a camera operator it's not going to be super smooth ramping up in speed it's going to follow it's going to follow it's going to stop it's that that's what you get at that love at that price level do, 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 do. ian says watching from ipswich the united kingdom thank you very much and don is watching uh from california uh, Don says, which yellow box would you purchase today? I would purchase the Ultra um, because it's the most powerful. Hands down. You don't, unless you have cost issues, um, I wouldn't go and purchase the model from four years ago uh, unless that was all you could afford and you needed to get into that level of solution. Uh, I would purchase the Ultra because the Ultra is going to be improved for the next five years and just have more features and refinements put into it. At a certain point, the older models don't have the processing capability to do more. For instance, if you were if you wanted to use a USB audio mixer, um, can you even see that? No, you can't. Uh, let me just zoom this out. I meant to zoom this. Oh, actually, I'll just go to this one. If you were to use a USB audio mixer like this and have the USB come in the top here like this, in the pro the mini the in stream and the original you could not mix it with anything else because there's not enough processing in the ultra you can and that's what i've got here i've got hdmi and and uh usb audio being mixed so if i go now to my overhead and i scoot this down a little bit you can see if i go to my audio mixer um i have i can turn on usb one and HDMI one. I can turn them both on. I can't do that on any of the other models. Remember, the, the Ultra is designed for 4K, and it can take in multiple 4K cameras. It can record multiple 4K cameras on an Android tablet. You know, at, that, at, at some point, I'm just like, doink, what? Um, and because it's designed for that, for me, personally, this is me, HD is all you need to stream. So if I buy a box that can do this and I only ask it to do this, it's going to do a lot more of this better. You know, so I don't get the frame doubling that I see on the Pro, which has which I'm sort of at the limit of what the Pro can do, but the Ultra is out here, so it can do more. Uh, hoping that they add HLS capability to the Ultra. Frank has not ruled anything out. You throw things at him as his, he's like, we'll look at it. Can the new Ultra handle ISO quality video from three cameras? Sony ZV-E10 shooting 4K at 25 frames per second. How do you recommend I record them? 2K or 1080? You could do 4K. It Like I showed you. Uh, do, 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 do. Actually, I think... There was a uh, let us let let me leave this up there for a second and let's go back into this is why I love live shows because you ask a question and we do it. Uh, my cam is not coming in. My cam is coming in at HD. So the, my camera is actually set to 4K, and I have a ZV1, 
so we're kind of in the same uh, thing. But if you come over to here and you go to the record and you say 4K, and I say, well, let me lower this. Or you were, would you say, would you say 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 25 program? You reach the upper limit we support. What if I lower the data rate? Nope, just program. 20, just program at uh, 4K. And if I go to 1080, I only have that many inputs plugged in. I don't have anything else. I can I can try to plug in another cable, even though there's no, nothing on it. It would just it would get the device to show me more. <laughs> Maybe. And uh, do I have to add that as a source? Oh, there's nothing on it. Right, that's what I said. This so it, until something shows up over here as an input, um, I can't add it. But I can add NDI. My camera is still on. It's looking on the network. Bum, 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 bum. There it is. Tail air. Done. NDI one. So there you go. Uh, and you said 25 frames per second. So I've got four inputs at 1080p. Let's try 2K at, you said 25 frames per second. Two, three, four. So it looks like you could do 2K and probably do uh, all your inputs. And it's maxing out at 60 megabits per feed on that one. I have Starlink. Is that okay to use Yolobox Ultra? Uh, the two are not related. Uh, Starlink is an internet provider. So if you have enough upload speed, and generally when you go to stream, you would set your, that's recording, so. I'm like looking for the settings because I've moved them around on here. Oh, and you know what? I'm probably in monitor. Yeah, I'm in monitor mode. That's why. Done. Let's go into the streaming mode. Silly me. Here we go. So now I have bonding, and you have a lot more streaming mode. And we'll do multi-platform. Got it. And then we'll come back over here and stream encoding settings. And so here... Oh, sorry. You're not looking at that. My apologies. Uh, in streaming mode, you have the ability to maximum bitrate, 13 megabits at 1080p. Uh, if I want to, I really don't recommend streaming at 4K because there's not a lot of value there unless you're doing like jewelry live streams or something. But if you were streaming at 4K, let's give it a, no, I said 4 30. 30 is the maximum you could push at 4K. And if you were doing 1080p, it's going to drop to 13 at 30 frames a second. And we'll do 5994 because I'm in the US. And so that is what you're going to do. And if your Starlink can give you a solid, I always like to recommend double. So 13, that'd be 26. So if you can do, <clears throat> if you have a solid 30 up and it's constant, it's solid 30 and your latency is low enough, your Starlink should be fine for upload. Do, 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 yes, on the mix minus. Do, 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 do. Oops, sorry, they're moving around as I'm trying to click on them. Uh, Starlink satellite versus cellular provider Wi-Fi service was my next question. Starlink... Um, you're looking straight up and while it is shared, there's so much bandwidth in Starlink, you should not have an issue. Cellular, you're really dependent upon how many people are around you. So if you're like doing an event and there's a crowd of like 2000 people, the amount of cellular bandwidth available to you versus everyone else, because you're sharing the same towers. There's no, there, there's no way to say, no, 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 don't, don't, just me <laughs> on a tower. You're sharing that. So at any particular moment, you're, the available bandwidth available to you could just bottom out to nothing. Um, so 
that's it. But if you're in a rural area and you have good cellular coverage and there's nobody else competing against you, and you've got home internet on cellular, go for it. The thing with cellular you can do is you can bond multiple different carriers together and have a more reliable so if one bottoms out it's very unlikely that they'll all dip at the same time the you know it'll vary and you know you can use i have a, a video on the stream tech channel uh about you know activating this zte modem and you plug that into the usb port now i've got two cellular connections because there's one built in and then you get another one of these and you you know hook up a third carrier and then you've got three cellular connections and you're you're bonding all of those together now Bonding comes at an extra cost. Why do I have to pay for bonding? Because the YOLO box, which you paid for, is what it's doing is it's chopping up the stream, numbering those packets, and throwing them into the wind. And somewhere in the universe, there is a server out there that they go to. Actually, there's multiple servers. And it accepts all these packets that are all out of order. And I think it's going to shut down. Yeah, the, the camera just shut down. And those packets that are out of order have to be put back in order. So you have to pay for the server, you have to pay for the software, the engineering to do it. You have to pay for the power, you have to pay for the internet connection because you're not the only one there. You know, this has got to be a big fat pipe. You got to pay for maintenance and cooling and everything. It has a cost. And they just don't absorb this cost. What they do is they divvy it up and they say, okay, this is how much bonding costs. If you want to use it, this is how much it costs. And it doesn't matter whether it's YOLO Live bonding, whether it's Teradyke bonding, whether it's uh, Live View bonding, whether it's Peplink bonding or whomever, bonding should have a cost. If you buy a little box and it says, hey, you can plug in four Ethernets and there's no, and there's no bonding cost, I'd be very suspicious. Uh, do, 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 do. Do you have to buy bonding for each YOLO box or is it based on your account? Based on your account. Uh, but if you've got multiple bondings going on, you're eating up your data faster. Regarding local video files, are you able to pause and resume them at will during a live stream? Um, on the Pro, no. And I don't think still you're able to do it on the uh, Ultra. So let's add a lot of local video. We'll take this video, which I like to use a lot. Done. And... So, well, technically you can pause by cutting away. So I can't, there's no, as you can see, there's no control over it here. And I have it set so that when I cut away, it resets the 15. However, if you go into your settings, which are in a different place because I am, I move my uh, cursors around. Do, 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 I think it's up here. Local video play mode. Stop at the last frame. That's not the one I'm watching. Resume the first frame and pause when switching or just pause. So that way, if I go to here and it goes down to 1458 and I cut away, it stays there. So it does. Are you able to pause and resume them at will during a live stream? So now I'm able to pause and resume that at will during a live stream. And actually, that works with the Pro, the Mini as well to that that control is available so all of them work that way but you can't while it's up pause it you can't there's no way to just have it there or in some sort of picture in picture mode next to you where you talk about it and you want to pause it at a particular frame and talk about it while it's still up you have to cut away from it and then it will pause but like i said i personally like that so i will cut to it again and cut back so it resets so there uh, NC Promoter says, my Starlink works great with bonding. I stream at very remote places. Uh, be curious, throw, throw a comment back in here. Your Starlink works great with bonding. What else do you bond it with? Mike Sabatini, your name is familiar. Mm, do you agree that the touch sensitivity on the Ultra is inconsistent across various areas, in some cases downright terrible? Down at the bottom edge, yes. I have a definite problem with it down at the bottom edge. And if people don't know what he's talking about, I will clear this out of the way. And it's been mentioned, like, so if I go down here, it's it's got this little scroll bar, so it'll scroll back and forth. But if I'm trying to select certain things, I found that touching the bottom edge of the Ultra, there are times when I'm trying to do things and it's just not... There it goes. Not responding to me. So um, the bottom edge, and I... I think that happened when they added the scroll bar because that scroll bar wasn't there initially. 
So I think they added some, um, like I'm, I'm touching the local video. There it goes. You have to be up from the bottom edge. And other than that though, um, it seems to respond very nicely and fluidly as long as you are aware of that bottom edge, which again, I mentioned, when they added this scroll bar at the bottom, it's like they're allocating pixels. Listen, you know, this is not part of this type of thing. So I think they affected the whole bottom edge of the screen with whatever routine that they wrote to be able to, you know, have that scroll bar down there. Personally, I don't need a little underline. You could just highlight the item in red or, you know, make a whole box around it. Um, but that's just me. Uh, do, 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 do. Get more questions coming in. Starlink seems to be optimized for download. Of course, every the, most of most all of them are. Up no, upload numbers look low to me here in the United States. Uh, cable and DSL and even dial-up, you know, all of those were down were designed to deliver data. They weren't designed for upload speed. The only thing that has the same upload and download speed is fiber. And if you have fiber to the house or fiber to your business, then you have a symmetrical. Um, 100 down, 100 up, 300 down, 300 up, or whatever. Uh, everything else is faster down than it is up. Do, 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 do. Thanks for answering so many newbie questions. Much appreciated. You're very welcome. That's what I do these shows. So put it in your calendar, tune in every week, and look at the other content on the website. I appreciate it. Uh, hope the Ultra is not over my head. The Mini is so user friendly. Same interface. It's just, so if you've already been using a YOLO box like the Mini or the Pro, the Ultra adds things. It's not relearning anything. It's just adding things. Oh, you know, there's a different way to, you know, now you can rearrange your, you know, video source icons um, like this. You know, I can click on this and move it. So there is certain things that are unique to the Ultra, but by and large, it is, it is an evolution, not a revolution. Uh, NC T-Mobile. So he's bonding Starlink and T-Mobile. I also use T-Mobile here. Uh, but right now, we are broadcasting on cable. Can you use a touchscreen monitor to, to replicate the Ultra? Yes, you can. Uh, it has been mentioned in the Facebook group that you can take this interface, use the USB-C, which is on the bottom, and uh, feed it over to a touchscreen monitor. Although not a 1920 by 1080, you need a 1900 by 1200 or something like that, a three by two. Um, and that uh, particular models have been discussed in the Facebook group. So if you're looking to do that, uh, go to the Facebook group so that you can get models that other people have already purchased, tested, and they know they work. Uh, Mike Sabatini continues, I have sensitivity problems in the audio mixer, network settings, and other places. So, um, audio mixer. Generally, I don't, although I have found sometimes I'll, I'll click like that. I just, I'm trying to move, maybe, there it goes. So, yeah, they're, here you go. You, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I'm clicking on the dot. I'm clicking on the dot and it's not moving. There it goes. <laughs> it makes it really hard to get it in the right spot. Maybe if I just touch the, the numbers, you used to be able to touch the numbers and then it would let you, uh, on the pro, you can touch the numbers and then type in a number directly. So definitely I am seeing that. There we go. Okay. Now I'm never going to get it back on the zero after somebody tries. I struggle altering the period on the scoreboard with the touchscreen. The, yeah, there clearly there there is optimization that can be done. JJ's Aviation TV says, talking network, I took your advice this morning for show and switched my router from 5G to 4G and almost doubled my upload speed. Yep. People keep asking, why doesn't it have 5G? Why doesn't 5G, 5G? 5G is marketing for, for cell phones. Um, because it'll deliver more data to you faster. And here in the U.S., uh, we know that uh, some of the carriers that are offering 5G still do the upload on 4G. Your data may, may, may come down real fast, but it still goes up via 4G. Also, um, even if there is 5G upload, you're streaming. You've got 5 megabits up. You've got 
seven megabits up or whatever it is. You don't need 20 or 30 or whatever it is. So, you know, having that much in a cell phone, um, after a certain after a certain speed, it's uh, it's a level of diminishing returns. And I am going to do my speed test on my cell phone. What does AFV stand for in the mixer screen? Audio follows video. So that when you click on a source, it takes the audio from that source. When you click away from that source, it turns that audio off. Very useful if you're doing remote guests. You only want their microphone to be active when you bring them onto the screen. And you don't want to hear four people just talking around, blah, 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 when they're not on this screen. Do they make a cage for the Ultra like the Pro from Onion? Absolutely. And I covered it. Go to the YOLO, go to the Stream Tech channel, and there is a Cage Wars video that specifically talks about uh, the cages that are available for all the different models. And I just did a test right here, my upload, and this is an older 4G phone, 30 down, 18 up. And like I said, you know, I still would always love to have double, so nine. So if I'm streaming at five megabits, I would be comfortable streaming at five megabits with 18 up. Um, I wouldn't want to stream too much higher than that because uh, then you're, you know, remember, cellular can dip and go all over the place. So I want to make sure I've, I'm down here while cellular bandwidth available is bouncing around way above. That's why I always say make sure you have at least double the bandwidth for whatever you're trying to stream so that whatever this does doesn't affect you down here. So that has been <laughs> that has been the longest Q&A at the start of a show. Ever. <laughs> so let me get back to this. Let me go back to the home screen. Yes. And um, today I wanted to talk about let's clear this out. Today I wanted to talk about the Yolo Box Ultra. And uh, clearly, a lot of people who are watching today are familiar with it, interested in it, may even own it. And um, it is an exciting product because it takes the all-in-one solutions to the next level. Now, the, the Ultra, in addition to having four HDMI inputs and doing NDI, it also combines horizontal and video production. You can use four cameras for video. You can use NDI, I'm sorry, four cameras for vertical. You can use NDI for vertical. That's really cool. And they're going to be adding more capability in addition to TikTok and uh, Instagram, which I can't log in, but that I digress. <laughs> but the key thing is you choose between the two. Uh, so if I come out to the main screen here, do you want to do live live streaming or vertical streaming? Not both. You're not going to stream to TikTok vertically and YouTube horizontally at the same time. Now, I know that Instagram just released the ability to add RTMP to Instagram. The key thing to remember with that is Instagram is going to take a center slice. It's just going to take this vertical slice from the center of your frame so that if you have stuff on either side, nobody's going to see it because they're taking a slice from the center. So if, I, if you're doing something like me and you do a side by side, now that center slice does not have me in it. So you have to be very careful when you are thinking, oh, I can now just RTMP over to Instagram because Instagram has RTMP and I can go to all these different outlets. Instagram is not taking this horizontal image and putting it in a frame. It's taking a center slice, a vertical slice. So I always say that when making a video, when making a live stream, make sure you're delivering a stream for the channel that the channel and the audience there wants to see. So if it's TikTok and Instagram and it's a vertical reel on YouTube or Facebook or something like that, people want to see vertical. That's why they're clicking through those videos because they're vertical. They're not looking for a horizontal thing in the middle of a vertical wasted space. 
That's what they're not looking for when you go to do that. So produce for vertical or produce for horizontal. And what I do here is I would take the output of my pro, and I did this several times. You can go to my Inst Instagram and look at it. I took the horizontal content of my pro and I took the top part of me and then I took the whole horizontal frame and I put it down here so that if I'm showing something like this or if I'm doing a uh, an overhead view like this of just and I'm and I'm just showing you something on the screen then that is available underneath of me that that whole screen would be available down here for people to see in addition to me talking so it's like a side by side except it's top and bottom and when you start with the in-stream, I'm sorry, the ultra, and you've got these three choices, realize that you're only gonna be choosing live streaming or vertical stream or monitor mode, but that's just recording, you know, vertical or horizontal. You're not, you, you can't click both of the buttons at the same time. <laughs> that's not a thing. Hey, two pineapples clicked in from Hawaii. Uh, I like the flip cover. The screen when portable is adorable. Uh, on the um, on that one, yes, it is very adorable. Sorry, digressing to the cages. Do, 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 do. I like the flip cover for the screen when portable is adorable. It is the uh, very adorable. And like I said, it covers the screen like that, and then the back. It even covers. Um, most of the ports on the top there and then you can fold it around and it looks like that so yeah there's lots of solutions out there john shaughnessy says good afternoon good afternoon to you azu and don kato says okay do, 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 do. all right let's continue on with the um Ultra. So this is your main screen. Now, of course, if you're new to YOLO Box, you need to go to the YOLO Live website and create an account. That's going to be your YOLO account. What it does is if you go into live streaming, it's going to call up shows. These are shows that I've created. It keeps an archive of these shows. You can delete these shows when you want, um, but they're also available between devices. So uh, something created on one device can be seen over here on another device. That's handy. Uh, also, if I do a show on long lenses like this, I can come over here and I can say duplicate that show and it will carry forward the overlay graphics, the videos I had loaded, any picture in pictures I had, it'll carry that forward. So I can I can do women's basketball, uh, have a show and I can do men's soccer, have a different show and I can or a talk show during the day and then uh, a how to video. I can have all these different shows and just keep duplicating them forward. That's the cool thing about having that account. Also, uh, on the, I have it right here, on the YOLO Live website, the your account gives you the ability to have the Overlay Lab. And what the Overlay Lab does, oops, let me open it again, is it allows you to create overlays, which are titles and sports, things like that. It allows you to create them and make custom ones like I did here and save them. And those are going to be able to be administered and changed online while you're doing a show on the YOLO box. And that's free. They call it the Overlay Lab, which is a cumbersome name. And it's, it's still, they say beta, but it's been beta for like a couple years now. So I think you can pretty much rely on it. The like I have a I have a scoreboard right here, and if I click on the scoreboard, open the control panel for the scoreboard, somebody can be watching the stream remotely at home, and they can be updating the scores on the scoreboard while I switch cameras. That's pretty cool. So and that is included. So you, you know, once you create your account your YOLO live account, that account gives you everything. And then there's also for the ultra, there's web control, which uh, I'm not gonna get into today. That'll be in a deep dive coming up. I 
Can I use an Ultra to stream an art feed to OBS? Do you have a video on how to do this? No, I don't have a video on how to stream an art feed to OBS. It's not something I've needed to do. Oh, SRT feed. Sorry, I was looking at the little version over there. Uh, SRT feed to OBS. I do not have an SRT uh, tutorial. SRT is kind of tricky, which is why I can see it needs a tutorial. Um, you have to like sender and receiver. And then the weird thing was when I needed to send video, uh, the only way we got it working was I called myself the receiver and the person that received the video that I sent was the sender. It's very confusing. It's, it's not the most intuitive uh, solution out there. You can also do this via NDI and NDI bridge, but you need a you need items on either side to connect the bridges, whereas SRT is point to point. Now, continuing on with the YOLO box. So once you create or duplicate your shows, you have your standard events and then you have YOLO cast events. So YOLO cast is basically like YOLO Live's version of Vimeo or YouTube. It's your own dedicated content delivery network or CDN. CDN is a very common term in this industry. So if you don't already use the word CDN, learn it. Um, YOLO Cast is YOLO Live's CDN. And what that does is that allows you to do monetization and you can host it on a web page, you can embed it on your site and you're doing it all through YOLO. And the convenience is you can create a YOLO cast event on the computer, you can create it on the tablet and that's visible in both places. And you know you get the links and then you can just put the embed the links on your YouTube and, and you're not using YouTube or anything else. Uh, it also helps in terms of if you're doing music or a concert series or something like that, because YouTube being owned by Google and it's massive, will be going through and looking at the licensing for everything. Whereas a smaller CDN like this, you're more able to have more control over what you're doing and where it goes. Switch over here. How can I overlay an open app from my Android phone to the Ultra? Uh, you would just, if you have a USB-C on the bottom, you could just plug in an HDMI cable from here and bring HDMI into the Ultra. I've done that. Um, also, if you have, uh, if you use the NDI and you grab the screen, although some people have said that's not exactly working as well as it should, it's an NDI issue, um, where they can, they can see a camera via NDI, but the screen grab from the mobile device is not coming over. So there's an NDI issue with that. So those are two different ways you can do it. Uh, also, if it's an iPhone, you can mirror your iPhone on a um, airport, not an airport, Apple TV, and then take HDMI out of the Apple TV. I have done that for doing demonstrations here in the studio. So you've got your two different events here. And then let me go back out. See the little back out button at the top. And you can't see because you're looking at that. Let me go here. So now you can see my finger. You see the little back out button over here. This is your settings. Uh, this goes back out to here. So you can pick vertical streaming. And if I pick vertical streaming, do, 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 look at that. There's my same two cameras. Then if I want to add something, look down here. I still have my NDI. I still have my SRT. I have my multi views and everything. I still have my audio mixer. I see. Did everybody rotate their device so they can look at this? Um, there's your record settings. There's your auto switching. There's your multiple apps running, you know, so that you can do both TikTok and Instagram at the same time. Here's all your settings, just like the other way. Um, and then we come back out of here. Yes, I want to. I want to exit. And then we're back out here. So you can see you can do vertical or horizontal. Monitor mode simplifies the device so that now all the streaming things that would normally be down here are not here. They're just, there's no buttons, there's no clutter, there's no nothing. So if you're not streaming, you're just recording something. Like if I'm doing a tutorial, I use the monitor mode because I'm just recording. I don't have remote guests. I don't have bonding settings. I don't have, you know, let's go back out, done. Go into the live streaming. 
go into the show. Now, if you come down here, it's like I've got remote guests. I've got bonding settings. I've got, you know, destination settings. I've got, you know, all these other settings that I don't need to be looking at because I'm not going to be using them because I'm not streaming. I'm not connected to, I'm not connected. Although here's an interesting caveat. Oh, and the other thing with monitor mode is you will get higher bit rates with monitor mode than you will get with streaming mode because streaming mode assumes you are streaming. So you're not going to want a 100 megabit in, in code because you're streaming. Most people can't stream a 100 megabit stream. And if you are in streaming mode, you can still record. And if you wanted to just record, but also have remote guests, you would do it in streaming mode. So that that way I'm in streaming mode. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do my set up my records, but then I'm also going to invite re remote guests to join so that I am connected to the Internet for the remote guests to come in, but I'm not actively streaming. So you need to do that in streaming mode so that the Yola box understands that there is an Internet connection that it can leverage. That is a little bit of a caveat. Any new questions come in? Do, 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 do. Rakumar says, hello, Anthony. Good to see you. Uh, no new questions. We will continue on. So, done. We are going to go into the streaming mode, and I will go through the icons. Now, I have rearranged these icons for me because I personally like to have um, overlays and comments right next to each other. If you're using a Pro or a Mini or any of the early ones, they're not next to each other. But when I'm doing a show, I'm constantly switching inputs and I'm constantly doing overlays and comments. I don't need to access anything else constantly. Those are the things. So this, the Ultra, gives me the ability to move these icons around to where I want to see them. If you are doing sports, then you would likely probably move the sports scoreboard way up to the front. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There. That's how you would like your YOLO box laid out. Me, I don't do sports. So I'm going to take this guy, this item, sorry, and I am going to try, is that the end? No, nope, it's, I keep dropping it. Do, 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 do. Come on. There we go. I'm going to put it way at the end. Don't care. Don't want it. And there are certain things that I said should actually be in the settings, like your bonding. If your bonding is active, it's active. If your bonding is not active, it's not active. It doesn't need to be an icon, an icon at ready access at the bottom of the screen. That's my personal opinion. Um, instant replay. You can turn this on and off. It's not something you're really going to keep accessing this menu, so it doesn't need to be at the bottom. Your streaming destinations. Once you turn them on and you're streaming, I don't need this icon to be at the bottom of the menu, which is why these are all off to the side, or I should say off, wait, wait, let me get the direction right, off to the side, past the gear. Those are all settings. Whereas the things that I would want to access are right here, right here, and right here. So that is a nice feature about the Ultra is that you can rearrange this. Frank has hinted that certain features of the Ultra may find their way to the Pro and other models. And because this is not something that actually takes constant processing power, I can definitely see this customizability being uh, brought to um, the other models but i can't guarantee that i'm not part of yolo i can't tell them to do things you know any more than you can i can comment in the group and say hey um can you do this this would be great please <laughs> to pineapple says that's a great feature <laughs> it is it is definitely a great feature um don canos meaning streaming comments or chat is dockable streaming comments there is no chat that, that um, I don't know what you mean by chat streaming comments comments coming in from the live stream. Uh, 
And it's not that it's dockable. It's that it is, um, you can move the those particular items around on the bottom of the um, Yolo, La, Yolo box ultra here. You can just move them around and arrange them how you see fit. So first thing I have is here is my overlays. If you're familiar with the Yolo box, um, you know all about this. If you're not, it has a ton of built-in graphics capability. You almost don't need a computer. Although like if I want to bring my logo in, like here's some backgrounds, here's some logos and stuff like that. Uh, there's my stream for us company. There's my Frisco studios. There's my AV communications. I should have a stream tech in here somewhere. I don't, hmm, this must be an old card. So I could bring in my Aiba company logo and say right there is the perfect spot where my logo needs to be. <laughs> I can scale it, I can position it and you know, like that, done there. So now when I'm doing a stream for a company, their logo comes up, there it is, super great. Um, you could do lower thirds. There's a bunch of lower thirds that are built in here. And for each of these lower thirds, there's a lot of customizability. You can put them right there, which I think is, you know, the most important, you know, place where they should be, right? Yeah. Um, you can change the font, the text, the color, and how long they're there. Auto hide is a great feature so that if this, if I was Frank, if I was Frank, and Frank also has a live show now. He he took over my live show, so to speak, and he does a lot of the same things. You know, where's everybody calling from? Um, <clears throat> so kudos to Frank, and I gave Frank a great idea. So as you can see, uh, right there, I have a monitor in front of me, so I can see the show right below the screen. Um, I noticed he was looking down and off to the side a lot. I, I told him get a monitor and put it by the camera. So hopefully his next show, he's he's more. He's more like me. <laughs> but if Frank were here, this would be his title. Maybe it wouldn't be that big, but <clears throat> let's scroll back up. There we go. And then the auto hide, and we'll just do it for six seconds. Done, done. So when you call that up, you can actually see it does a countdown. And look, Ma, no hands. And it just goes away. That's really cool. Um, for this show, I am using um, Restream, and Restream has these um, comments that I can bring in, but they don't go away all by themselves. I wish I could tell them to go away all by themselves, but they don't. So I have to remember to click on it again to make it go away. So there's an advantage to the Yolo Box over a, an online streaming tool like this. Uh, you can do a countdown timer, and as you can see, I've got two countdown timers right here. I can click on that. Boom, there it is. I'll turn that off just in case the audio is going through. And you can do layering. What's in front? Like you can see right now, this is in front of, or it's over top of, oh, sorry. There's my countdown timer. And as you can see right here, the countdown timer is actually over top of the logo. Well, if I wanted to send it behind, I can send it behind and now the logo is brighter and I can bring it to the front and now the logo is darker. And then you can also edit. You can come in here and change the background music. So I can select music that I've got on my card and do the dimming color. You can do, change a lot of the settings for each of these titles to make the titles your own. Cancel. Uh, do, do, do. You've got full screen titles, welcome to the show, countdown and things like that. Let me get out. You have web URL overlays. This is what I was talking about. So when I showed you the titles that I have in my overlays in the overlay lab, those are available. So let me go get the American Soccer No Logo. Let's go back to the Ultra. So I'm gonna click on the Ultra overlays, choose from YoloCast. Of course, you can customize because you can go get other things that are not on YoloCast. And there's my American Soccer Low logo. Let's get that done. And now you can see it right there. It's a little small. Oh, the web overlay size. Yeah, this is this has always been wonky. The height. I'm not changing the height. I'm changing the scale of everything. The width. Am I changing the width? No. I see it, they kind of do the same thing. And then when I change to change the scale, it doesn't do anything. So this is one. Hey Frank, fix this. 
Um, <laughs> fix this, please. Done. But now I have the ability to have those uh, scoreboard come up. And like I said, somebody else anywhere on the planet can be logged in and changing and updating the score on the web browser in the account. And I don't have to worry about it. I'm just switching the game. And lastly, social overlays. So if you want to have a Facebook overlay like that, you could say done and then bring that up just like that. So all of that is built in in the titles. And that is one of the key things that makes this an all-in-one device is that all of these things are built in. You don't have to keep going to another device. Now, you can create graphics and load them in. And like when I want to use um, my background, you know, I could take this graphic and bring it in and put myself over the background in the YOLO box. That can all happen, but I created this graphic outside of it and I brought it in. You can do that or you can create graphics built into the YOLO box. Next up is your comments. Now, I am not streaming, so I don't have any comments yet, but this is where the comments would be. And up here, you can see there's different, you know, um, looks. I mean, let me select that again. Click on that. I like the top one with the red bar. And then with these, you can also change the scale. If you can get the slider to work position it where you want it. Like Frank had it up here and it was actually over his face a couple times when he was looking at the screen. I personally like to put it as low as possible. Now it says uh, 9.99 cents or 9.99. Um, that's if someone does a, uh, like on YouTube, they can pay for a special comment. That's what that is. You're not actually paying for this feature. It's, it's kind of confusing, but that doesn't mean you're paying for the feature. That means if somebody did pay five dollars or two dollars or whatever it is to you on youtube for a comment it should show up like that as a special bling like that you can change the opacity like that of the background change the colors etc etc and it will pull the image and you can see it shows a little youtube icon over there it's going to pull that automatically from the different services now that said the YOLO box only streams to, let's go over to the streaming part, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. It doesn't do LinkedIn. It doesn't do X. It doesn't do Instagram. It doesn't, there's a lot of things that you're not going to find. Let's see if I can do this right. And there's a lot of things you're not going to find over here other than these three things. So if these three include what you want, then comments work great. If you want to do LinkedIn, like I wanted to, and other services, then you're going to need to send it somewhere else. Like I have LinkedIn down there. That's an RTMP direct. You need to send it that way. And I'm using Restream to be able to bring in comments from LinkedIn. Although looking at the list, nobody's responding from LinkedIn. Don Kate says, oh, for a super chat. Yes, that's the word. And if you all want to send me a super chat, that'd be great. <laughs> Send me a super chat. Oh, actually, don't send it yet. Send it next week. Well, I still have to get monetized. Um, so, yes, that's the super chat. It's supposed to be super chat. There's been not a lot of people have that, and it's uncertain whether it fully works uh, all the way through and comes back. And it is reported from YouTube back into the YOLO box properly to be properly. Da, 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 da. The whole circle has not been verified yet. So. Those are the chats right there. Then you've got your audio mixer. As we mentioned, audio follows video. Can I do this? Yes. Audio follows video means, uh, or AFE means audio follows video. It defaults to off. And this works like any audio mixer. Like I have an audio mixer right here. And there's no input turned up unless I turn, unless I, oh, I'm going the wrong way, unless I turn the input up. It's not on unless I turn it on, like, you know, and then I have to turn the output up and everything. I have to, I control the audio here. The same thing with the audio mixer in the YOLO box is that these are all off. There's nothing on until I tell the YOLO box which audio to use. People are like, why can't it just turn the audio on? All right, which one of these do you think it should pick? 
unless it's the Terminator and it has a really good AI, it's not going to know which one of these it you it you want it to pick. So you pick it. So if I want HDMI, I turn that on. Look, there's my audio. Yay! If I turned on HDMI 2, hello, hello, hello. No, that's that's the wrong answer. Uh, if I turned on USB 1, hello, hello, hello. Actually, I have a microphone for that. Click my microphone on. There you go. So that is the audio mixer coming in right next to me over here. And I have a wireless mic and I have a receiver coming in up here. And then that is coming through, through USB, over to here, through USB. And I'm able to turn that on. And I'm also able to turn on, let's just say that one, because I know there's nothing coming in. But I'm able to mix USB with HDMI. And I'm able to mix these two and add the local video. Whereas in the other models, in all the other models, you can't mix USB audio with something else. So that is important to know. Um, one place where that may come into, uh, one place where that may be important in terms of audio is, let's just say you're doing sports and you want to use a, a little USB camera as a wide angle camera right on the top in the shoe of the video camera you're using to do the close-ups. So you've got a wide and a close, super great. And if it's a Logitech that's got stereo microphones, why not just use that for stereo audio? Yeah, you get everything all nice and stereo and everything for the stream. Super great. You're mixing USB and maybe the audio, directional audio for the kicking and the soccer ball and everything from the directional microphone plugged into the video camera. You want to mix those two. Or you've got announcers off to the side. So you want ambient audio and then somebody off to the side is doing play-by-play -play into a microphone or a headset. You can mix those two now in the Ultra. And if you remember, here's a shameless plug. If you're watching and you haven't yet subscribed, we have these cool glitter stickers. I'm waiting for it to sh There you go. Cool glitter stickers. Amazingly, the glitter does not show up as well as it does normally. If I like look at it with my eye, it's like super cool. And if I look at it on the camera, it's not super cool. But if you have any additional questions, we're going to continue to do this walkthrough. Uh, if you have any additional questions, throw them into the comments. And I will look at them and try to answer them as I go. So there's your audio mixer. One of one other important feature to note is if I'm coming in USB audio, it's not coming with the video. So the timing of the audio coming through the audio mixer, whether it be a line input, and I can give it, I have a wire just sitting here actually. I'm going to plug it in. Oh, it's on the bottom. Yeah, I, did, I disagree with the placement of these things. It's going to lick them on the bottom. Uh, there. Now, I plug that in, and it should have added line input. Okay? If I have an audio mixer right next to my switcher, and it's coming in line input, it's coming in instantaneously, analog fast. The Yolo box, in order to sync multiple camera videos together, they had the signal has to be ripped apart, rebuilt and timed so that they all begin the frame at the same time. When you have multiple cameras all scattered around, they're all grabbing frames on their own sync, their own, you know, refresh rate. When they come in here, if you want to have two pictures like this picture of me and the picture of that stuff next to it, the only way to have those two pictures on the screen at the same time is they have to refresh at the same time. In order to do that, the YOLO box and any video mixer that does not have gen-locked sources has to rip the signal apart and rebuild it according to the internal clock. That takes time, it creates a delay, which is why when you listen to the audio in the YOLO box, there's an echo. It's not an echo, it's being delayed to match the video delay. So if I'm feeding in line audio, then I need to delay the line audio, probably about 60 to 80 milliseconds. Two frames at 30 frames a second is 60 milliseconds. 30 milliseconds per frame at 30 frames a second. It's math. 1,000 milliseconds is a second. And if you do 30 frames per second, 1,000 divided by 30, you know, it's just math. Uh, comment came in. If I stream 4K to Facebook, will it increase my quality even though Facebook does not do 4K? Nope. Facebook is going to dumb it down to look like crap. Anything you do. 
Web URL pages do not load properly. Is Frank aware of this issue? He is because enough people have complained about it for long enough. If he doesn't know about it, shame on him. Um, no. <laughs> he knows about it. People have begged for that to work properly. I have emailed him to uh, address that. And there's only so much engineering time that they have in a given day with so, you know, each person, so many hours, so many, you know, that it takes to fix things. And there's a lot of things that they want to fix. And there's a lot of features they want to do. And there's only so much engineering time to go around. But I would definitely, I would definitely put that way higher on the priority list than some of the things that have been fixed. Although I'm not saying that the things that have been fixed have been bad. Like they spent a whole lot of engineering time getting the frame rate right, getting 50 frames per second, whereas the YOLO box still can't output 50p via the HDMI. The Ultra can because they made that an engineering priority to happen. And kudos to them. But that meant that those hours be, were being put in that bucket. They weren't being put in the fix the web URL bucket. Mark Orr on Facebook or LinkedIn. Hey, woo <laughs> I jumped over here to send a comment on LinkedIn. As I'm watching on YouTube and didn't want you to feel left out on LinkedIn. Hey, you're probably the only one watching on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has been a zero traction platform for me for weeks. Uh, I have been trans trans broadcasting there for, God, it's been months, actually. And, man, LinkedIn is like the hardest thing to crack. And I see other people with good audiences on LinkedIn. I just don't get it. So thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. At least we know. as And now you can see um, right here, the LinkedIn is working. And I've got the image and the icon and Mark Orr. And these are all things that the Yolo Box can't do because it does not have a LinkedIn API built into it. People have asked about that, but again, that's extra features as opposed to let's fix the problems first. Uh, ben Kate follows up as an OBS user. Audio filters are a grace. Does the Yellowbox have filters for audio or an ATEM or Stream Deck as needed? Uh, there is no filtering in the Yellowbox Ultra. There's some noise reduction in the in-stream. Um, people find it a little too aggressive, and uh, they initially tried to put it into the Ultra, and uh, people said just turn that stuff off because if you tried to put in music or something like that, the noise reduction was just making the music sound like poo. And um, so there is no audio, there's no limiter, there's no equalizer, there's no noise gate. Noise gate would be really great. Um, none of that is in the is in any of the um, YOLO boxes at all. So, thank you for the question. Very good point. Uh, click hide. So, down here, go to the overhead. Down here is where you would adjust the delay. So you can adjust it. And again, right down here in red, dark red, you can see it's about thirty-seven milliseconds, and I can. I can increase that if you can get the slider to work. There you go. You can adjust that and it won't actually activate until you let go. So you can move it around and then when you let go, you'll hear er, you'll hear a little bit of a jump, especially if you're delaying it, it's going to catch that little bit again. Um, and that's how you would adjust the audio of your line input or your eight, eight, your USB or even your video if you needed to delay things because you never know how the audio is, what the audio process is. Watch the video stream, listen to it, check it, make your adjustments. And that is a built-in audio mixer. Next up, you've got your invite guests. And you can invite remote guests into your Yola box as um, like Zoom or whatever. And you can carry on a conversation. A um, couple of key things. You don't need a computer. You can do it right here. Just type in a guest's email and send it out. They will come right in. They could use a phone, a computer browser, a tablet, doesn't matter. It's just a browser-based solution. And um, so you, on this end, you're just using the Nolo box. Again, as I says, these are all in one devices. So the features don't necessarily, you know, it's designed so that most all of the features don't require a computer in order to be able to make them happen. However, you can also send a link to yourself. <laughs> and then create a QR code or whatever you want, put it up in the corner, something like that, 
And I did that in a show, my last show for YOLO Live in December, I had a QR code for remote guests and I set, set it up on the screen. I said, just point your phone at it and then we'll bring you into the show. That was really cool. Um, that is going to lead to the next part, which is you need to make sure you turn on allow participants to join. Um, I don't understand the need for this because what is the point of the feature if the you leave it off. If you leave it off, they can't join. Well, if I wanted them to join and I send an invitation, I obviously do want them to join. So you got, but you have to remember to turn this on because I have actually sent invitations, forgotten to click this, and nobody is showing up down here. And I'm wondering why is oh right okay click turn it on and then they can show up. Mute guests audio by default. Yes, please, um, so that it, you're not hearing five people all of a sudden talking in the background. Um, this will mute them by default, and then, like we talked about with the audio follows video, you turn that on. Then, when you go to that input, like this, I'm going to leave that on, and when I switch inputs, it switch, switches the audio so that the audio from that input is what is up. So if I have a picture-in-picture, picture, me and the guest, when I bring up the picture-in-picture picture with me and the guest, both audios will turn on at the same time. Actually, I'll show you that. I'm going to do a uh, split view with this and this. I say done, done. I don't really care. So now I got a split view. Remember how I was doing this and this, and you can see only one audio is on at the time. When I bring them both up, they're both on. That's how that works. That's how audio follows video works. Um, what audio follows video is bad for is everything else which is why the default is off. So that if you set my audio is going into camera one, and as I do my show, I don't want it. When I go to the overhead view, I don't want the audio to turn off. I want you to keep hearing me as I talk about this device and I'm using this camera angle. I don't want the audio, to, I want this to stay on. I don't want it to follow video. So that default is off. Only in those cases where you do want it to follow, then you turn it on. Uh, comment came in. Can you ingest an SRT feed to Yolobox? If so, do you have to have an open ports? Yes and yes. That's how SRT works. You have to open those ports, which is why SRT is hard. Um, but you come over here and NDI and SRT. <clears throat> so you click on SRT, you see your input URL, da -da -da -da, listener, caller, da -da, all that stuff, open ports, you know, SRT IP address slash port, for example, da -da -da. <clears throat> it's a little tricky. And I know experts, streamers who are still, SRT still provides, is still a little tricky because everybody's network is different. And here in my office, I have a I have my own router for my office, which is a different than the networking router for the building. And me having my router and say, oh, I opened the port in my router, but it's not open in the router in the building. So it's it's an issue because you have to make sure that port is open all the way through. So tricky. Turn that off. Next up, we have a remote guest. We did that. You have your recording settings. And so this is how you can set your recording in the Ultra is separate from your streaming. So you can stream a 720p feed and re record masters at 1080p for each thing at a high bit rate. And then in my stream encoding settings, say I'm only going to do 720p at 1500. So that way I know my stream will get through to an audience, but I'm going to have a much higher quality master that I can edit or do something with later. So that is the advantage to this. You can do your ISO records. And if you had an NDI feed, unfortunately my camera went to sleep. So I think the battery may have died. Uh, I can add one NDI that is on, but there's nothing plugged into it. <laughs> so it's just going to be black or it may just be a, a, a default screen done. Yeah, there it is. So that is my uh, no signal detected NDI device. It's actually behind this camera. 
and I can then add that. So I can do NDI, I can do HDMI cameras, I can do the program, and I can ISO all of those. I can record them in H.264 or H.265, which is a little harder to process, so you're asking more of the device. Recording limits means how often do you want it to segment the file? So if there is a catastrophic crash of the device or the, the app or whatever, you're good until those last 10 minutes. Now, if you're doing 10 minute segments of five files, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. You know, you're you're, you're going to have a lot of clips. Or do you just want to just risk it all and say, just give me one file? And next, your storage settings. You can record to the SD card or you can record to something plugged into the USB. That's up to you. And this is where you would select that. So those are your recording settings. Next up, you've got your bonding. I don't have bonding, but this is where you would activate it. Uh, you pay for it online. You give them your serial number. They turn it on. You're good to go. Stream destinations. You have to, you don't connect your accounts here. You connect them in the main screen. So when you're out here, let me exit this for a second. Done. And then you go over here. This is where you actually log in to each of your accounts right here. And then when you're in the show, if I were to go to my Aiba, I can go public, unlisted, or private. I can do unlisted and I say done. And it's going to think for a second, make sure the connection's there, and boom, it's ready. My Facebook is probably not still connected because I don't use this one for streaming directly. Uh, so every month or a couple months, Facebook requires you to reauthorize your connection. So there's that. And I will touch base a little bit on uh, Facebook is depreciating the apps in groups. So if you're used to streaming into a group, um, as of April something, uh, Facebook is depreciating that capability. Um, there's a lot of discussion on this online. You can find tons of YouTube videos on it, so I'm not really going to delve into it too much. Um, my um, advice for streaming into groups is don't. Um, first of all, it's they're going to depreciate it. Second of all, even when you were doing it, the problem is that uh, privacy requires that each individual person who comments would have to individually opt in to share their uh, picture and their name. Other, otherwise, you get a blank picture and it says Facebook user, which is useless. So it's the whole point. It doesn't create a community. If you instead create a page and, for example, do, 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 if you were to create a page like my stream tech page and then share the video that you are streaming to the page into a group, then you can take that stream and it will receive the picture, it will receive the name because it's going to a page. Even if it's shared into a group, it's still a video that's being shared on a page. In addition, if you're sharing to a page, you can leverage uh, Facebook's cross-posting. So if you have like a music festival, you can share one video to the page, but it can also be reshared on other pages automatically. You don't have to do anything. Facebook does all that for you. So stream to a page, don't stream to a group. April 22nd, thank you. Uh, April 22nd, but you can still use RTMP to Facebook groups, but you, you don't get names or uh, photos with um, RTMP at all to anything. Uh, commenting on that other part, I would just been testing SRT mini server, which has a proxy feature to get around port forwarding. It works great via mobile dongle for remote studio. Yes, there are workarounds to how complex SRT is. So SRT is a very cool solution. It is very valuable in rough internet conditions uh, to get a stream through with redundancy. That's very cool. It's also kind of a high-end feature. And the people who need to use it are generally the people that need to use it often and will have the expertise to use it. So <clears throat> in it, it, while it can be in the YOLO box, I think the, the percentage of YOLO box users who are going to be using SRT can be counted on one hand. Let's continue on with 
this. And next up, there's my stream settings. We have the instant replay. And the instant replay on the YOLO Box Ultra has been hugely improved over the instant replay on the YOLO Box. And that is such that if I turn it on, please set video sources. Oh, reset the video source. I can do multiple channels of instant replay. <laughs> and then I turn the replay on. It's going to archive all of them. Now, for those who don't know, Instant Replay uses the media that you have in your device, SD card or a USB stick, and it's constantly writing all those clips to the thing over and over and over and over and over again. So there's a whole lot of writing going on. So if you don't really need Instant Replay, turn it off because you're using up the right level. You know, you can only write and rewrite Flash Media so many times. And if you have a 10 second replay, you know, if you say 10 seconds or a seven second replay, it's constantly rewriting seven seconds for all of your cameras over and over and over for the entire game, two hours of game. You're gonna wear out media faster used having the replay on. And if you're not gonna use the replay, turn it off. Uh, replay audio, do you want the replay audio on? I generally say no, because if you're gonna slow the replay down, which really helps with replay, people expect it to be slowed down so they can see the difference, then you're not going to want the audio to be slowed down too, so turn that off. Mute other audio sources. No, I want the commentators to continue to be heard, so I'm not going to mute the other sources. That's how I, this is how I would set it for what, if I were to do it. You set it up for how you want to do it. Replay mode preferences, always play now, always use later, or always ask. That can be kind of confusing. Some people, like when a play happens, they want to see it right now. Other people, they want to do these uh, replays, they want to mark the replays, but they just want to save them for halftime or quarters or after the game for like uh, highlights and stuff like that. So you can say always use later and then you'll be doing the replays and it won't interrupt the game. Replay logo, you can um, add your own replay logo like that. <laughs> That'd be a really cool replay logo. Full screen on the blah. <laughs> But um, that's the cool thing now on this one, on the Pro and the Mini, you just kind of get a little word replay kind of up here in the corner. It says replay. And it's very subtle. Um, so being able to do your own replay logo is a nice advantage. And transitions for intro and outro. So this way, people are more made aware. It, it's very much like broadcast where you can do something. Um, you can do something a little bit extra to get into the replay and then back out of the replay as opposed to it just cuts, which is how it works on the Pro and the Mini right now. Who knows which of these features are going to be trickled down to the older models? I can't say. Uh, I'm not part of the engineering team. But uh, Frank has said that, you know, the, the Ultra now, you know, when the Pro was getting all the kinds of new features, some of those features trickled down to the original Yolo box. Now that the Ultra is the big dog, some of these features will trick down to the Pro and the Mini. Which ones? I don't know. I can't say. Next up is Auto Switch. Auto Switch, actually, let me go into Replay and turn Replay off. Auto Switch is let's just say you were doing a, a craft show and you're doing pottery and your hands are busy, but you want to be able to talk to someone and have a, 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 a top down camera and maybe even a side camera and things like that and or a multi view and, and switch between these things automatically. Well, once your hands are covered with clay, you don't want to have to keep reaching over to get your goopy hands all over the YOLO box. That's yuck, you know. Um, or if you're doing sewing, your hands are busy. Or if you're doing painting, you know, you got your, your palette in one hand, you got the brush, you know. My hands are busy. I, I, got, I got stuff. I'm, 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 you know, I'm Mr. Ross. I'm painting happy, happy trees, happy trees. And, you know, you don't want to be switching cameras. So you can have the YOLO box do it for you. So you go in here and say, what video sources? Oh, let's do this and the split view and, and that. And you come back out and you say, how long on each of those channels? Let's just do 10 seconds each. And then uh, you want it to loop or do you want it to go in random? It'll just, you know, go this one, then that one, then this one, then that one. So it's just not plop, 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 plop. Not like security camera. Then here's the really cool thing, your main video source. Let's just say uh, HDMI 2 is my main video source. Actually, yeah, HDMI 2 is my main video source. 
I want, that's the one I'm talking to. I want that one used more. So what that does is they, it's going to center on that main video source. And then you can say, stay on this one longer so that I can talk a little bit, talk a little bit, and you get a quick overhead shot and I'll talk a little bit, talk a little bit, and then you get a front view. You know, that way it kind of really does feel a little bit more natural where you're able to connect more as opposed to 10 seconds, 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 10 seconds. And, and again, you can make these settings your own. Six seconds on one, three seconds on another, multi-view, another multi, you know, you can really dress this up how you want it to work for your broadcast. But having this auto switch built in is pretty slick because it frees up your hands. You know, if you're a DJ, that's just you're doing a music show and you got your hands, your hands are busy. You're always doing stuff. You got the headphones, da, 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 da. You don't want to have to switch between your overhead view, a view of you, a close up of the turntable or whatever. Let the Yolo box do it. Got a comment in here. When I use cross post Facebook live videos, will the comments be displayed from all pages? Yes, uh, because technically there's only one video. It's cross posting is this weird thing um, where the video goes out to your page. It's also shown on the other pages, but it's like there's only one video. So when the video ends, it's only going to be available on that one page where it was shared. It's not going to be available on all the cross posted pages and all the people who are commenting on the cross posted videos are technically all commenting on the one video. It's, I don't know how to really describe it. It's like sharing it so that when you click on it, you're actually sent to the one video. So it's actually really slick. And uh, last up, last up on here, we have the scoreboard. There's a built-in scoreboard. I know I showed you the one that's on the web. There's a built-in scoreboard. So you can turn the scoreboard display on. Actually, let me go to a straight view. You can move it around the screen. You could make it larger, it's smaller. It looks pretty basic at first, but again, you can go into the scoreboard styling and make it yours. You can, <clears throat> what font do you want? What do you want the game name to be? What's the text colors you want? Then you got each team, the team one, the font for that team one, the text color for the team one, the background color for the team one, the logo for the team one. Hey, guess what? I've got logos in here too. Boom, team logo there. Team two. Well, actually, that would probably be better over here. Let's go to team two and make them the team with the red. Uh, done. And since I don't have a green, I'm going to, or edit, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make these guys orange. And then I'm going to make this orange done. Mm -hmm. So look at that. I've got my red team. I've got my orange team. Again, it's an all-in-one device. It's built to make this kind of stuff easy. And you saw how quick I made that. I got the two different things. Actually, on the overhead view here, let me go to this view. You can see the red a little bit better here. It's red and orange, whereas the overhead camera kind of looks at it as orange and orange. Uh, so you can see that and team two, team two logo, team two background and all this stuff. I would probably make that text white. So it jumps out at you a little more. I would probably make that text a little bolder. Do, 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 do. See if I can, there you go. Open sand, there you go. Nice big team two. So you can see that a little bigger. Ba, 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 ba. Scoreboard styling. And then you've got your period, first half. You want the time in there too. There's your time. Now I'm getting a little big, so I have to size it down a little bit. Put it down here. And you you know you can add the score. There's the score. Boop, 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 boop. Look at that. Great game. Thanks everybody for coming. <laughs> and then if you click that little icon in the corner, you've got all these different styles. I, I say all one, two, three, four, five. You got five different styles, but you can see there's a bunch of different styles in here already for different types of sports that you want to show different things. I've only been editing. I'll get the direction right at some point. Uh, that's the one that was the default, but you can change to any of these. So I can come down here to the tigers and waves. There you go. And then there's the two colors. There's the score and everything. Reset goal, period first, add the time. Where did it add it? Let me see. Oh, there it is, down to the very bottom, it's very small. Countdown timer. 
time control, reset the time. So there is definitely some flexibility with the built-in scoreboards. But of course, this is not a scoreboard tool. And I will say that, you know, while these scoreboards are good and handy for most of the hobbyists, if you are big into sports and the sports thing is your thing, there are multiple online standard scoreboard only software packages that really deliver, you know, broadcast level scoreboarding in a software package that you can get and then import into your Yolo box. So I know people, you know, want the Yolo box to do everything in terms of scoreboarding, but a jack of all trades is a master of none. And I think scoreboards is one place where it's good. It's handy. If I was to do like, you know, my son's soccer game, it'd probably be just fine for me. But if somebody is doing sports, uh, you know, as their business or baseball or whatever, and they went in here and they wanted to do baseball and also show, you know, who, what bases are in top of the inning and how many outs and balls and strikes and yeah, no, 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 that's not built in here. You're going to need a professional broadcast uh, sports package to be able to handle all that data. And also you're probably going to want somebody else to be doing it and not also be switching cameras and handling balls and strikes and speed and da 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 That's where the online tool comes into play because you can build your own from scratch as well as being able to use third-party software packages. All right. I think I have reached the end of the list other than your, you know, built in your video switching control, your video out settings, um, 50 and 60. You can send USB-C out to, uh, actually, let me go turn the scoreboard off. off. Your built in settings here, uh, starting at the top, your video switching control, you know, click to switch or double click. I like single click, but if you're in a bumpy situation, you can use double. Local video switching, we covered this earlier. Uh, I like to resume the first frame and pause, uh, but if you needed to, you can pause when switching and come back to it. It'll resume. Local video play mode, loop, which is great for like a pre-show or just stop at the last frame. Your video out settings, uh, you can send just program out like just this, or I can send the whole control screen, which is what you would want to do if you're using USB-C to an external touch screen. 50 or 60, like I says, that was really ironed out for the Ultra. Hopefully that feature trickles down to the Pro. USB-C out will then feed your program out USB-C so you can plug it right into a computer and feed it into Teams or Zoom or anything like that. And flip horizontal so that if it's being flipped in the app, you can, you can pre-flip it before it's flipped in the app <laughs> to make sure things read correct on the screen. NDI out, if you activate NDI on the YOLO box, you activate all your inputs, which is three, and you activate your output. So you can then also go NDI to any other device on the network, including Teams or Zoom, bringing in the NDI source. Video source transitions, uh, there's a fade to black and a cut and a fade. Um, generally, I just like cuts, but you can't choose on a you know basis. So if I go to video, it cuts. Personally, I would like to fade the videos, but you don't have a choice on a you know item by item basis of how you want them to transition. Unless you quickly go in here, quickly change the fade, then fade to my video and then back to cuts and then I can cut out. But generally that is not left up on the, uh, the right side here. Your stream encoding settings, I covered this earlier. This is how you encode what you're sending to your content delivery network, your constant bit rate, your variable bit rate, your the actual bit rate, how many frames, and whether you're going to use H.264 or H.265, which at this point, I recommend using H.264 for two reasons. It's a, it's a lighter encode for the device and um, not all destinations or content delivery networks support H.265 for ingest. YouTube does, but Facebook doesn't. So that is, uh, I generally say stick with H.264 for that. Do, do, do next one up SD card management. You can go through here and uh, select files and delete them. <clears throat> Portable storage management. I don't have any connected streaming mode. Whether you want to use Yolo Live's multi streaming service, uh, kind of a very basic thing that's kind of buried way down here. When you purchase a Yolo box, Yolo Pro, Mini, whatever, 
you get multicasting included. Now, you're not just sending one stream, which is what this is. If I want to send, got it. If I want to send directly to YouTube, that's all this is going to do. It's between this box and YouTube. Now, if you're okay with going through someone else's server, got it, you send one stream to the YOLO Live server, and then the YOLO Live server sends it to, where are my, where are my destinations? Three destinations. So I could turn on one account validation failed. Yeah, so the Twitch is not working either, but I can send it to multiple destinations done. I can send it to multiple destinations without sending multiple streams. So if I was to do a five megabit stream and I was going to send it to three destinations, how much data do I need to upload? Five megabits because I'm only sending five megabits to the YOLO Live server, and then the server is sending out three destinations. That's the difference. And this is included. If you need more than three, you can sign up for YOLO Cast, and then you can have a whole ton of destinations using their content delivery network. But three are built in and included with the YOLO box. So that's a pretty handy little feature. And back to the settings. And mobile web control. You can, oh, I called this up. Boop, 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 boop. On the on last week's show, if you happen to watch it, I was talking about lenses and I actually went to a different location. I went outside the office here and connection drop, confirm. I went outside the office here and go to my overhead. I used my Android tablet using the app. They have an app that's available in the store that's called, oddly enough, let me exit all this stuff. Go away. YOLO Live. It's not called YOLO Live Control or YOLO Box Control or YOLO Control. That's a hint. <laughs> YOLO Control. That'd be cool. YOLO Troll. Um, it's called YOLO Live. You click on it. And then what it does is it looks around the network. Let me make sure I get that in the frame. And because it's on the same Wi-Fi as the Ultra behind me, I can connect to it. So now I see my inputs. And I can switch between the inputs using my tablet. And this is what I did last week where I was outside with two cameras and I could switch between different multi views using my tablet and I can see what's up. It's got a little red line that would be nice if it was a little thicker. Um, but then I can switch to the multi view. I can switch to the single view. I can switch over here and you can see this working directly. You can also look at your overlays and it's going to take over this part of the screen. If I go to my overlays, you can now see there's my overlays. So if I bring up an overlay, there it is. And of course, it's going to time out and fade out by itself. And I did that just by touching here. There it is. And I can fade out early manually. And then I can go to audio. And you can see when I touch audio here, it's actually activating that part of the screen on the YOLO box. So this way I can adjust my settings here as well. So hey, maybe if you're having a trouble getting these sliders to work, maybe these sliders would work a little better. Do, 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 do. They could be a little thicker. They don't need to be as thin as this. Whoops. No, not that much delay. There we go. Nope. It's still kind of a little fickle. They need to be thicker for fat fingers is what they need to be. Fat finger adjustments. Um, the downside, not really a downside, but the thing to be aware of is if you have someone on the machine and they are adjusting your overlays and someone is remote and they want to adjust the audio, as soon as they hit the audio, the screen on the YOLO box is going to change. So uh, there may be a way around that. Like if I select, if I now select the uh, image overlays, I can bring up an image overlay while, yes, they are still able to, so you could leave this out off to the side. Uh, let's go over here. 
you could leave this off to the side and have your audio mixer settings here while still, you know, you get like three screens. I don't know, I haven't tried it, if you could have multiple tablets out uh, showing multiple things at the same time and just line up control surfaces across your table. But being able to switch your sources remotely, that really helped me uh, do the show last week on the Ultra. I was able to go outside with just this connected to the Wi-Fi and switch my inputs so that let me go to the overhead. As you can see, if I touch this, I'm switching the inputs on there. And this is just an Android Fire, uh, um, Amazon Fire tablet, super cheap, that I have opened up to be able to access the Google Play Store. And that makes it super simple to be able to access that. I believe it's just Android for now, and they are working on iOS. And that kind of covers everything that I wanted to cover for the, am I streaming? No, I'm not streaming, but it's got this little cool icon up there. Uh, maybe that means that somebody is remotely controlling it. That's really cool. Can I click on that? Nope. And that is uh, this doing, um, doing a monitor record is kind of the same thing. It's just, it takes away the streaming settings, but Pretty much everything else works exactly the same way. Your titles, your graphics, your video playback, your recording, your all of that remains exactly the same for recording as it does for streaming. Confirm. So I exited and it, and it closed. <clears throat> so this has been my look at the Yolo Box Ultra. I hope this has helped you. Um, again, if you're still watching, thanks for sticking in there. We've had a good audience through the whole show. Uh, and I appreciate you all being there. I'm uh, going to do a little bit of plugging right now because uh, if you haven't already signed up for the Stream Tech channel on um, YouTube, click the su subscribe button. We have some really awesome stickers. <laughs> to give out glitter stickers, stick them on your laptop. They're super cool. Uh, I know I should have one on here, but that just has my other stickers. And um, these will be available. I'll be handing these out at NAB. If you are going to NAB, you can get a Stream Tech sticker for free. And uh, these are available for subscribers. Uh, Bert says, nice presentation. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you commenting and letting me know that you found it useful. Um, everyone... Over there subscribe to the channel watch some videos if you find something that you find useful hey share it on your social media because that would help me a lot because i'm still trying to get those viewing hours up uh so that i could you know make this into an even even bigger thing i also offer consulting and streaming services at stream for us stream the number four dot us is my streaming company where i do freelance streaming services stream for us ad removed yeah okay Thanks. You don't need to tell me an ad was removed. So remote production, competitions and shows, panel and events. Um, that's me. I also write for streaming media producer. If you are a streaming media producer like me, you can sign up for these newsletters right here. They come emailed directly to your inbox. You don't have to remember to go to the website to check for new articles. They'll just come to you and I have a regular column, and you could also sign up for an actual print magazine, streaming media magazine. I have written for streaming media magazine for almost 20 years. And in this issue, I have a column, and I have a review of the OBSBOT, and I have a review of the Director Mini. And that is this issue of streaming media magazine. So um, with that... I am going to bid everyone adieu and thank you all for being here today. I enjoy doing these shows and I will uh, see you next week.